Hey everyone, Biscuit again, and welcome back to part two of the review of the high grade Universal Century G3 Gundam plus Shars Custom Rickdom. Uh, in part one, we took a look at this guy right here, Shars Rickdom, and in this video, we are going to be taking a look at the G3 Gundam right here, or the RX 78 3. Uh, so, let's get straight on into the aesthetics of the model kit. So, jumping right on into the colors, uh, first of all, you get a very nice, um, gray, uh, throughout most of the body, and, uh, that was originally the white on the RX-78-2, and I will mention, the blue also changed to this shade of gray, um, for some reason, I have no idea why, but I love it nonetheless. Um, something I will mention is, for some odd reason, uh, this isn't colored quite like the, uh, line art model. Um, I'll try to put up a, uh, picture of one right here. Um, but as you can see, uh, <clears throat> the gray on the vents, uh, should be more of like a black color. Um, and all the gray throughout most of the body is more, well, gray than white. <laughs> That makes sense. But I am not complaining. This is this is almost like what I don't know, almost the almost like what a Gundam would look like in in, in actual colors if it just stepped right on out from the show and into real life. Um you get a very nice uh, celestial blue color um going from the chest to the feet to the shield and you get a nice dark gray uh for the chest, chest vents, uh, and skirting armor, and you have another shade of gray. There's a lot of gray on this model uh, for the inner frame, the weapons, and just uh, other accessories that the figure comes with. Uh, talking about uh, stickers and painted surfaces, you get uh, two stickers uh, for, ooh, if the camera would want uh, to focus, there we go. You get two stickers for the eyes and the little bit of the, oh, I don't know what you call that, face guard, I guess, on the top there. Uh, those are two individual stickers, so they are kind of hard to line up. I didn't want to have to go through the trouble of painting them. You have a nice red uh, sticker for the front and back of the head. And looking at the, um, the... CG image right here, as you can see, the head cameras are a little more pink. Uh, it might not show up entirely too well. Oh, that's a little better on camera, but they are more of a pink color. I'm not upset, though. Um, the red is a very nice contrast uh, to the rest of the model, hence why I put red decals uh, on the majority of the thing. Um, you will also need to paint it yellow uh, for the crotch and... Uh, this part of the shield. You do get color correcting decals with this because this uh, came out in tw 2008 um, when Bandai started including color correcting decals. Uh, but in this case, I just colored in uh, the V crotch with a bit of Sharpie and I painted this. I did paint this um, gold. Uh, and that's really about it. If you wanted to go the extra mile, I guess you could paint these. Um, I don't know, just maybe a, a metallic um, color would look really nice. And if you wanted to make it accurate to some sort of line art, you would need to paint all of these little squares here gray. So let's start talking about accessories. And this little part just told me that it wants to be looked at first. You get it. You do get uh, two of these beam saver parts in here. I only have the one. I seem to have misplaced one. Uh, you also get a nice red beam, and that plugs in very easily just like that. Not uh, too tight, but not loose at all. Taking this alternate uh, grabby hand, you can put it right in there. Holds on very nicely. And by doing that, you can pop it into the hand, and now it looks like uh, it's armed for some close-range combat. Um, on the standard HGUC kit of the RX-78-2, I wasn't too big of a fan of the red beams, um, but on this kit, uh, I really like the red contrasting with the gray. I don't know what it is, I think I'm a little weird, um, 
but I really do like uh, the way that the red looks uh, in contrasting to the rest of the model kit. Uh, that could just be because the original model had red on it, but I don't know. And when the beam saver is not in use, you just pop out the beam. You don't have anywhere to put that, but I mean, whatever. Uh, and you can easily pop it into the backpack here. Again, you get two. I only have the one here. Um, this is only held in by pressure, though, uh, from this part colliding uh, with that little ridge right there. I wish they would have found some way to make that ridge maybe go across uh, the whole bit of the back where the thing is because the connection here can pop out easily but oh no <laughs> i spoke too soon but it's not the worst thing uh in the world as for the shield uh on this guy it is connected by a peg into a polycap on the arm that plugs in like so and you have another peg connected to a polycap within the shield um that can allow for quite a bit of movement. It can rotate all the way around at both points, and working in conjunction uh, with both of them, you can lower the shield like that, and it can actually hold it in the hand. Oh, just be careful for that uh, back of the hand popping off. However, uh, because of this, um, I don't know what's going on with this, but uh, it might just be my kit, but mine does hold it at a weird angle. Maybe I built it wrong or something, I don't know. Um, but to do be careful about that. Um, I don't know if there's a way to fix that, but if there is, I really couldn't care less. So, uh, let's go over to the rear of the thing. As you can see, there's a bit of a nasty hole right there. Don't worry. You, that can either be plugged up by this thing here, um, that just pops right into the slot like so. There you go. Um, or if you wanted to introduce this clip here um for a, his other weapon it just pops into the back oh wrong way around it just pops into the back no that was the right way there you go it just pops into the back like so and that works with his other weapon here the beam bazooka um this goes into the trigger finger hand from the previous weapon so, what you have to do is you gotta split the hand apart, and you're gonna want to feed it kind of like a, a sandwich uh, through the grip. Um, you can hold this in the standard uh, normal holding hand if you'd prefer, uh, since there isn't exactly too much of a good way for it to look, since the trigger finger hand... Ooh, if I can uh, get this on here. There we go. Uh, as you can see, the trigger doesn't exactly rest, the trigger finger hand doesn't exactly rest uh, on the trigger per se, it just kind of flops. Uh, you can hold it in the standard normal holding hand, I'm not, um, because again, I'm weird. So, uh, upon popping this hand out and putting this thing back in, he can easily wield the beam bazooka, and man, does that look awesome. Uh, as for the final accessory you get, you actually get a core fighter in the G3 colors. Please uh, don't uh, think I'm bad with the decals. Uh, let's just say the top coat got a little too close. Um, this is mostly color accurate. Uh, the wheels are going to need to be painted black and some details uh, like these uh, little divots on the core fighter and bits on the wings do need to be painted. Um, I'm pretty sure the same gray that's on the model here, but I am completely fine uh, with it being like this, just because it's a nice little uh, plus one to have. So let's jump straight on into some size comparisons of this guy. So here is the RX-78-3 G3 Gundam next to a 1144 scale core Gundam, the real grade 1144 scale crossbone Gundam, the the High Grade Cosmic Era Destiny Gundam, and the 30 Minute Missions, uh, the 30 Minute Missions Portanova Space Type, custom painted by yours truly. And, of course, next to the High Grade Universal Century MS-09RS Shars Rectum. So, as you can see, uh, it's it's, it's very average uh, because it's the base Gundam. Um, it's average. It's completely average sized. 
I could not be happier with uh, the size that this thing is at. And overall, I just feel uh, that it almost feels small when you're holding him, but that is in no small part due to the fact that this guy, uh, because, you know, they're kind of from the same set, um, that this guy is, he just, it's just his proportions um, compared to this guy's uh, proportions are a little uh, different to say the least. Um, but let's stop beating around the bush with an awkward segue. Let's just get right on into the articulation. So starting off with the head for the articulation, it goes up and not that far uh, down. Again, not that far. Um, the shoulders are connected by a peg um, and the shoulder armor can move slightly independently because it's fed through uh, into the polycap. Uh, speaking of which, uh, there is a butterfly joint in there, so it can move forward, uh, not back at all. The arm uh, is on a swivel, so you have a full swivel here that's pretty tight. Um, you have a 90-degree uh, bend at the elbow, and the wrist is uh, a polycap into a ball joint, so it can wiggle around, turn around, swivel, and do everything a ball joint will do. Um, as for uh, the shield, um, it's on the previously mentioned double hinge joint uh, slash ball joint combination uh, with polycaps and a peg being there. And the chest is pretty interesting. So you have a full swivel. Hey, yeah, you have a full swivel. Um, but in order to activate this guy's side to side movement, you actually need to pull on it just enough to see that bit of gray part. So, when it's moving side to side, uh, it's a bit of eternal detail. That is a very nice touch and something I wish more model kits would include if they had the chest room for it. Uh, would have been cooler to see an actual transforming core fighter, but hey, this model came out in what, 1999 or something? I don't know. Um, but I mean, whatever, nitpicks. Uh, the front skirts are molded together on the runner, but, oh, if I can, uh, whatever. The front skirts are molded together on the runner, but you can't separate them. Uh, leg can move up. If you bend the knee, you could get, and bend the knee up and over, you could get the leg up a little farther. Uh, leg, uh, eh, it doesn't move back that far, but, uh, for the paralyzed butt flap, that does, uh, move back quite a bit more than you would expect. Uh, th these legs being connected by a ball and socket, uh, the... The splits, it's pretty good. The side skirts are connected by a ball joint so they can wiggle around, do, turn around and do everything the ball joint does. Uh, the leg can move from out to in uh, pretty nicely. You get a, it's a double jointed bend. However, you only get a little bit more than 90 degrees. I'm not too upset though, that's just enough. And uh, the ankle here is a little bit weird. So you have a bit of uh, up and down movement, and you also have a peg. You have two pegs. One is connecting the foot or the ankle uh, part right here into the leg, and the other is connecting the foot. The one that connects the foot is actually the one that moves for some reason, which is a little weird. Uh, ankle armor can move up and down, and the toe can move up that far and move. Uh oh, oh no. Yeah, you're gonna want to be careful uh, with these polycap uh, things. As you can see, I try to tighten up the joint. Uh, I think I'm thinking of just gluing it. Uh, you're gonna want to be careful with these things because, ooh, the old polycaps that they used in these model kits aren't exactly the greatest. There we go. So, move can foot can move down, up. And it has a slight pivot. I'm sure if you hyperextended that you could get more. I don't want to. So overall posability on this guy is pretty good. Um, of course, it's not the greatest, but I can't fault this thing because the base model for this came out, what, like 50 years ago in internet time. Um, but I, I'm not upset at all on the level of articulation. It's just enough. Uh, to go around and get some very dynamic poses um, with uh, the model, and uh, yeah. So that is it for the review of the High Grade Universal Century RX-78-3 Gundam plus MS-09 RS Shars Custom Rickdom. Um, 
I, I couldn't recommend this set enough to you. It's uh, two really great models. I'm sure the assembly of uh, them, this one in particular, uh, is a little bit dull. Uh, that m That's mostly because the technology is just a little older. Um, but if you get around that segment, um, and if you were to probably pick these up for a first kit, I would totally recommend them. Great articulation. I mean, a little outdated, sure. But great articulation, great accessories. You get two of them, and what? The price is only like $20. Um, so, I, I could not recommend this set up enough uh, for you. Whether you're uh, beginning into the hobby, or um, a full-time collector... Uh, I cannot recommend the set enough. Thank you guys for watching. Um, if you haven't checked out part one, uh, check, check description or something. I don't know. I'll probably put it down there. I hope. Um, uh, subscribe, I guess, please. I, 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 I'd like that. Thank you. Um, bye. Bye.